thank you avp education for the nice uh, introductory video and good morning to everyone and thank you to avp education for giving me an opportunity to moderate this session today we will discuss on data science data engineering and cyber security we'll just touch upon a little bit on cyber security primarily we would discuss on data science and data engineering reskilling for a digital world we have with us here today distinguished speakers i would introduce uh, you to them one by one mr charanpreet singh is a founder director of praxis business school foundation uh, charanpreet has been a part of the corporate world for more than 20 years and has rich experience in industries like cryogenics steel international trade consulting and it with organizations like british oxygen tata steel pwc uh, hewlett packard he established uh, praxis with the mission to create business leaders equipped to navigate with a world of increasingly which is increasingly driven by technology the praxis data science program is consistently ranked within the top 3 programs in the country across both analytics magazines and the mainstream media charanpreet has taught the at the business school uh, univer or at the university of iowa and has been a visiting faculty at prominent management institutes like i am lucknow i am shillong i am raipur i am udaipur his areas of academic interest include technology uh, data science brand management and communication charanpreet is a btech in mechanical engineering from iit kanpur an mba from the university of iowa usa and a winner of the prestigious shevening scholarship for young managers awarded by the british government and british council welcome cp thanks thanks uh, we have with us here today dr ongshuman ghosh uh, who is a data science expert who is currently with grab he is ex disney target on wipro dr ongshu is a data science and strategy leader with 11 plus years of rich experience in leading tech media and retail companies he is currently leading the data science projects at grab and he was earlier as i said worked with disney star tv target wipro and spice he is also the visiting pro professor at top iits iims he is a phd and mba from xlri and a computer engineering graduate he was awarded linkedin spotlight 2019 for being one of the most top most inspiring and engaging leaders we have with us here today uh, mr sharad ghosh uh, who has been a part of the data science world for over 9 years now mr ghosh's expertise lies in machine learning cognitive research and solutions design mr ghosh has a degree in biotechnology and an mba from praxis and a data architect from mit on the career front mr ghosh has worked with hp labs ibm watson accenture ai kellogg's a major part of mr ghosh's job involves uh, cognitive designing of cognitive machine learning and solutions for clients mr ghosh also has experience in working with clients across sectors such as retail fmcg utilities pharmaceuticals oil and gas currently mr ghosh is working as an analytics manager with award epd strategy and is currently based out of switzerland mr ghosh has traveled and worked across the us uk and spain and ireland for the love of data science and sharing knowledge mr ghosh was also a part of praxis bangalore and iidt tirupati as an adjunct faculty over 3 years i'll give you all a brief introduction about myself my name is nirupam sen i am the business head east of british standards institution which is the national standards body of the uk we are primarily into auditing and certification of organizations with world best practices like information security business continuity uh crisis management etc i am a certified lead auditor in information security quality and it service management i hold an mba in systems and an advanced certificate in software engineering i have been working with the industry for the past 20 years now as the topic itself says we are moving towards a rapidly digitalized world all of us are traveling on the information super highway our banking transactions are taking place through the mobile our cars acs and fridges are being run through mobiles and while uh, all of you may have heard tom cruise is traveling to space with the help of elon musk some of us on the ground are missing out on catching up with the speeds on the information superhighway with without acquiring skills based on technology and data which have become the currently the hot skills on top of that uh, business disruptions have become rampant with, with the covid-19 spread the organizational boundaries have also shifted to people's homes 
So uh, let me ask CP here and I'll hand it over to him for a more detailed explanation as to why reskilling is critical. Over to you, CP. Uh, yeah, thanks Nirupam and uh, thank you Vibi for inviting me to the, to the webinar. Wonderful to be here. So it's quite an uh, international kind of a setting. We have people uh, coming in from, Spain, uh, from Switzerland as well as from Singapore to talk to us. Uh, that is uh, uh, respectively Sharath and uh, Dr. Ghosh. Uh, good morning to all of you. So, you know, yeah, so I think that what we want to do here is to uh, introduce you to what's happening in this world that, that we so fondly call the digital world and why reskilling is such an important thing for youngsters so that because they have uh, reasonably long careers ahead of them so this is a good time to you know figure out what's going what's happening now what is likely to happen tomorrow and and be ready for it so i'm going to share a small presentation we i'm, I'm not going to talk for a long time maybe between 8 and 10 minutes and i'll hand it over to the other participants and then maybe we can have a discussion i think that might be a better idea so uh, i just yeah, let me find my. Yeah, so. Uh, so reskilling for a digital future is what what we are looking at today. Uh, that's who I am. And that's the kind of world we live in. You know, we are analog beings. Human beings are analog beings. We are not zero ones. We are living in a digital world and facing a quantum future. So today I'll, I'll, I'll be a little silent on the quantum future because let's first grapple with the digital, digital world and then you know, we, can, we can go ahead and look at the quantum future as well. But that's the reality, you know, we are moving very fast. So the first part of what I'll do is you know, try and get a hold on what is this digital revolution all about and you know, what is really digital and why do we call it a revolution. Uh, and I am very uh, fond of data uh, and I think we all, uh, none of us has an option now, we have to be fond of data. So I'll talk about the world of data for a couple of minutes and then look at some of the skills for the digital world because these skills, there are lots of things that you can do in this world. We are looking at the, the, the ones that are driven by technology and data. And then maybe a slide each on careers in data science, data engineering and cyber security, which to my mind, are the three most exciting things happening in the in, in careers today. And then my last one, it sounds a little ominous, but it's basically to motivate you and not to uh, you know scare you. But I think you need to, I mean, if we are not part of the digital skill set, I think it's a it's time to reskill. Yeah. So so the digital revolution, what is digital? So digital revolution is a digital innovation that disrupt, disrupts the way we live and do business. So, you know, experts have said that this is one of the most transformational times in, in the evolution of human history. Uh, we are both lucky as well as stressed to be a part of these times. And uh, just to, to put in, you know, context, what is a revolution? So if you look at a two by two matrix, you know, all my presentations have at least one two by two matrix because the world is, you know, kind of driven by them. So if we look at the extent of change on the left axis and the speed of change on the right axis, when both the extent of change and the speed of change are high, then you get into what is called an evolution. So Charles Darwin talked about an evolution because although the extent of change was huge, the speed of change was slow. But when we look at digital, both the speed as well as the extent are very, very high, which is why it does not give us time to adjust. So we have to keep running to be at the same place, right? But also throws up a lot of opportunities. So, I mean, just to tell you, you know, when, when I tell people that we are experiencing disruptions, so people sometimes don't get it. So let me, let me give you an example, which is very Calcutta in nature. So we started our lives with the yellow cab and all of us here, the audience, as well as us, we know what an you know, exciting experience the yellow cab has been for all of us because the probability of getting refused was always higher than the probability of getting excited, if at all you bought one. And then we moved into what are called the radio cabs. So that was the first technology thing that happened. And then we moved into Uber and Ola, and we don't even remember the yellow cab now, because this was, this was disruption. So it was not really, it, it was not really an improvement on the yellow cab. The way the cab, so because for example, Uber does not own a single vehicle and it became the largest taxi fleet in the world 
driven completely by data and technology. That was the first disruption. The second one, which has already happened in the United States, is a self-driven taxi. So now, I mean, if you look at the yellow cab and you look at a technology and data-driven, self-driven taxi, and if you tell me that our lives have not got disrupted, then I think we need to discuss that. Yeah. So, and, and this has happened because of the huge, you know, uh, advances in what technology can do using data. So I look at Airbnb, the largest hospitality chain without owning a hotel, Netflix, which is like kind of a savior in these COVID times. So they did not really beat Blockbuster, which was a video lending library. They completely changed the industry on its head. So the business models change. Uh, the way you, you consume business and the way you deliver business changes. And that's why the skills that are required change dramatically. And finally, Khan Academy. So we are talking to each other. We are delivering you know, education online. So Khan Academy was one of the first ones to do that. So they changed the way uh, coaching and training happen. And, and Baiju's is maybe one of the examples in India, which basically started with the Khan Academy, uh, led by somebody called Salman Khan, a little different from the Salman Khan we know. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So yeah, but at the simplest level, uh, I think digital is nothing but technology and data, right? And uh, the th this this digital actually, you know, it finds new ways of creating value and improving the quality of our lives. So what is the quality of our lives, right? The quality of our lives is all of this recreation, housing, economic development, consumer goods availability, public services, medical and health considerations for, a, I think, not for the right reason, but eventually health is getting the, you know, the importance it deserves, education, social, cultural environment. So I believe that technology and data are having a, a positive impact on all these things that touch our, the quality of our lives, right? Which is why if you're going to be part of this revolution, then you're going to make a positive impact to everyone's lives. And I think that's a noble thing to do, right? So I, I was looking at some technologies, so I just picked eight. I mean, there are many that are happening, you know, some of the technologies that you will be listening, hearing about or are already engaging with the internet of things, augmented and virtual reality, blockchain, 3D printing, drones, robots, it's now got to 4D printing now, where you not, not only do additive print printing, but what you print, what you create can change its shape given the environment. So, you know, lots of things are happening. But at the core, if you look carefully, is what is called artificial intelligence. So all these technologies really depend a lot on data. So IoT has is, is actually nothing unless you have you can do something with the data. We, we get into IoT so that we can do intelligent things with the data. So all these you know, technologies not only are connected to each other, but they are all connected at the core to data. Okay, and how does it improve the quality of our lives? Yeah, uh, it gives us speed. We can do things faster. It gives us convenience. We can do things easier. You look at Netflix. Uh, it gives us reliability. If you look at blockchain, it is reliable. It is peer viewed. It is, uh, you know, uh, and then it gives us access. Today, you want to know something, you know, within seconds, you, you get access to information, to knowledge, to friends. Yeah, connectedness, that's the next place. So you, I, I have a group of friends from school now. We meet often now because we got connected again through, through this. And connectedness can be on career fronts, on, on passion fronts, on whatever you want to and affordability. So most of the services that were not as good as they are today are available to us, not only better and faster, but also cheaper. So that's where the, the that's how the quality of our lives is improving, right? So this is this is what technology and data do. So I just wanted to give you a, a you know, some kind of an idea of what's happening. And if you look at tomorrow's technologies, I think they will eventually need to address critical problems in the areas of climate change, environment, health, hunger, inequality. And, and technology and data will move towards this because this pandemic has shown that unless we you know, address the fundamentals, we are living in a very, very fragile world. So I hope that the world will take cognizance of this and we will move towards this. And again, I'm telling you youngsters like you, if you are equipped with skills in data and technology, you will play useful roles. In, in this uh, revolution. So for me, this is the real revolution. Okay. 
Now I'm quickly moving on to the world of data. So why are we obsessed with data today? Because we are generating unprecedented. So I'm using the word unprecedented in a different context. Now it's been used in, in, in the same context uh, for the last six months, but we are present, you know, generating unprecedented amounts of data and the way we use this data impacts the way we run our businesses, our governments and our lives. And a quote from the executive chairman, Google, from the dawn of civilization until 2003, humankind generated five exabytes of data. Now we produce five exabytes every two days. So that's the kind of data. So if we have so much data, we have to do something about it. Uh, the, so the most valuable resource is, is no longer oil, but data. This is The Economist, May 2017. And the COVID has shown that you know, it is truer than what it was in May 2017. Data is the most valuable resource in the world today. And all I'm saying is, please, please align your careers with data. OK, you can't go wrong. OK, so how much is unprecedented amounts? Very quick thing. We are, I mean, if you look at where we are, we are somewhere around the terabyte, gigabyte, petabyte, exabyte stage right now, which is right at the bottom. We are looking at generating massive amounts of data, so much that our you know, regular decimal system will not be able to uh, manage it. So that's going to be another opportunity for a lot of people, but that's still a little further away. But all this data needs, you know, experts need, need skills to harness and use for our benefit. Okay. So where is this data generated? Everywhere, social media, sensors, cell phones, GPS, and moment we make a purchase, whether it is e-commerce or whether it is physical purchase, the World Wide Web, emails, media streaming, okay, healthcare, IOT. So healthcare means, you know, all the equipment is now part of IOT. You could be having wearable devices, which will do proactive health management. You're already seeing applications that are being, you know, up downloaded on mobile phones. So this is where massive amounts of data, social media, every Facebook like, every Facebook comment, every YouTube upload, every share is a piece of data that gives us insights, right? So I'm not going to dwell more a lot on this. Every minute, look at the amount of data we generate. I'll just pick one, maybe you know, more than 5.5, about 5, 5 point, uh, you know, 5.5 million, or it's 45 million Google searches every every minute in Google, you know, on Google. So that's the kind of data we are generating. Yeah. Okay. So there is something called big data and just one final slide on that, which in fact was given to me by Sharath, who was here and who we worked together when we were teaching at Praxis, you know, just aircraft engines in the United States in a year generate so many terabytes of data. And this is useful data, not only from a, an, a, an engine point of view for, for preventive maintenance for the engine. It is also important for Let's say if you're looking at climate change, if you're looking at environment, how much, how much heat are we generating? You know, there are so many ways. Once you have this data, it only requires commitment and intelligent minds to do useful stuff with this data. And, and you know, as I said, benefit all of us, right? So now I'm moving to quickly to skills, which is my third thing. And the fourth one, of course, is reskilling. Skills for the digital world, right? One is technology skills. Now, if you are a technophobe, you have a bit of a challenge. That means you're scared of technology. I think it's difficult. Then don't use a mobile, for example. You know, we could be at a beginner on an intermediate level. I think we need to move to the advanced level. Few people will move to the technophile level. They are the guys who will probably create algorithms for the future or get into quantum computing. But I think if you can kind of be between intermediate and advanced and move from intermediate to advanced or beginner to intermediate, I think you will be able to carve out better careers for yourself and you will be able to, for me, you will also be able to understand the world better, right? I think you need to know a little bit of technology to even figure out what's happening. Yeah. So this is the, this is one area you need to work on. The other area you need to work on is data. Okay. So here again, you know, you need to start with data literacy. I give you an Excel sheet with data on it. Can you understand what's happening? Then you need to the next level, go to the next level, data familiarity. You know, I'm familiar with data. I understand data. And then data fluency. I'm fluent with data. Give me data. I'll, I, I can analyze it. I can give you results. You know, I can, I can make data work for me. Yeah. And then this data leadership. You know, I lead teams and I, I kind of 
I, I guide them on what they can do with data. I can guide governments on what they, they, they can and should do with data, right? Because as, as, as we say that this is the most important resource. So we need to you know, use this in, in the manner that we need to, right? So this is your second big thing, technology and data. The third thing is, you know, the kind of world we live in, you know, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, we call it the VUCA world. You need more than just, just technology and data. You need, to, you need to be responsive. You need to be able to adapt to change, right? Uh, you know, success, successful digital uh, world resources or global resources will be capable and continual learners. You need to be able to learn across your life. You need to have the curiosity to learn because whatever you learn now is going to get obsolete by the time you become, you know, you kind of become an expert, right? So it requires courage to learn, isn't it? Because, you know, if, because when you start learning something new, you admit that you don't know it, right? So, so you have, and, and it takes an effort and you have to be able to learn on your own eventually. Right now you need some, maybe some help and you need to be a lifelong learner. Okay, so can I become a better learner is a question you need to ask yourself. Can I become a critical thinker? Can I get out of a WhatsApp university or a Facebook university, look at the data, critically think about it, and can I, make, can I use my own head and what I have seen in life to judge what is, what is right, what is true, what is not, uh, so that I know what to believe, what not to believe, and I know how to use my critical thinking to solve global problems, right? My third thing is, am I a good listener? Can I listen and absorb? Can I ask the right questions? Because I know what I know. It's only good questions which will get me more information and knowledge. And do I have the ability to present complex concepts in easy to understand ways? Because people may not know as much about technology and data as I do. So am I a good communicator? Am I an effective collaborator? Can I embrace diversity? Can I work with people who don't belong to my community, who don't look like me, who don't speak the same language, who may not have the same religion? Okay, because the world is becoming closer because of uh, you know this whole data technology kind of partnership. So I will be able to have to work with heterogeneous groups and solve problems. So I need to be good at that, and that requires a whole new class and a whole new webinar to 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 get you into this. And finally. Because data and technology can figure out whatever is happening in this world very fast, I have to drive transparency and integrity. Because the moment I don't want to be asked a question, it means I have something to hide. So can I make my systems, can I make my technology, can I make my data available to everybody, transparent to everybody, and can I empower my employees and customers because they are examining my value systems every day. So will I be able to you know, kind of stand that test? So these are some of the soft, we call them very loosely soft skills, and I think it's a very abused word, but these are life skills that you need to have along with your data and your technology, right? So uh, Nirupam, tell me if I'm, you know, getting past 10 minutes or something like that, just let me know. So I haven't kept a stopwatch to be honest, but you can carry on. Okay. You can finish your presentation. Take your oh, time. Okay, fine. Right. So careers in data. So what do pro data professionals, so I call... I'm going to call all of you aspiring data professionals. I think that's where you want to be, right? So what do they do? Data professionals can make it available, make data available for use in a way that it can be used, easy to use ways. So we call it data provisioning, right? We can analyze it to draw insights, yeah? Because data gives us information, right? And we can protect it and secure it because if we don't do that, then whatever else we do is going to be useless, okay? So data engineering, is how you make data available and how you use the insights of the data to make it available to customers. How we analyze and draw insights from data is what is data science and how do we protect and secure it is cybersecurity. Okay, and all three offer profitable, secure, demanding carriers, right? Because they have to do with data, because the amount of data being generated is, is increasing and because the kind of things we want to do with data is also increasing, yeah? So I'm going to you know, really look, look at this quickly. I'll just go to the last slide now. So maybe we can come back to this uh, when, when we are discussing that data engineers, what do they do? If people want, I can put these slides up later against a question. What do data scientists do? Okay, what do cybersecurity uh, uh, people do, right? 
Okay, and I think uh, I have Dr. Ghosh and, and Nirupam also will be talking about it. So I don't want to you get into it right now, but it's there. But finally, reskilling. Now, what is reskilling? It's not the strongest of the species, nor that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the one the most responsive to change. You know, Charles Darwin said it. I think in the middle of the 19th century, and I think I don't I don't think even he foresaw the kind of changes and the speed of change that we will be having today. Okay, so he was a visionary, but uh, I would like to talk to him today and figure out whether he really thought. So the job situation hasn't been good for some time now, right? Even in the pre-COVID time, and we are all uh, we are all aware of it. And millions of people have lost their jobs in the pandemic. I was reading up some figures yesterday at the center of, uh, you know, the CMI, and I don't want to put these figures because they are scary. Okay, now this is happening on one side, but there is a parallel universe, right? The parallel universe is there are reports of hundreds of thousands of unfulfilled positions in new skill areas like data science, data engineering, and cybersecurity. So while at this one, one at, on, on the one side, so many people are losing jobs or looking for jobs or bored with their jobs. On the other side, companies are constantly complaining that they have so many data science positions vacant, there are so many data engineering places vacant or cyber security. And, and you know, Dr. Ghosh and Nirupam can, can, can kind of you know, add to that. And they don't find people. So it's not that there are no people. The people don't have the skills they want, right? So you just, you just don't get a job here by just you know, sending in your CV. They will look, look for the skills that they need. So you know, this is my last thing that I wanted to kind of talk to you about. Learn these new skills and reskill yourself. That is the first thing I want to tell you. And align your career to data because one moment you become align it to data, you're automatically aligning it to technology because whatever we do with data today is with technology. Become a data professional and invest time, effort and money to reskill. Reskilling is not about, you know, just taking, you know, some, you know, 10 hours course and then, you know, kind of coming to the organization saying an expert. Yeah, you will need to, you need to spend time and understand these things. These are all fundamentally complex, involved kind of areas. Once you start knowing them, they become simple, but you need to do that. Okay. So build an exciting career and be a part of the global digital resource pool. So that's what I had to share as the start to this wonderful discussion that we hope we are going to have. Uh, and I'll, I'll take questions, Nirupam, you, if you want me to take any questions that you can see right now, I'm fine. Otherwise, we'll come back to them. There are quite a few questions which have come up. We can uh, take them at the end of the session, I suppose, because we all have a lot to say. So let's yeah. take a, some questions at the end of the session. That would okay, be Okay, fine. So let me stop sharing now and then we will come back to this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, CP. Uh, yeah. Some interesting things that, uh, to know as to how zeros and ones have changed our world entirely. Uh, what started with uh, bits have, are now changing the entire, revolutionizing the entire world altogether. A few pointers from your presentation. Uh, we, we have a standard which is known as organizational resilience, which mm -hmm. these days looks at organizations which are agile, robust, and adaptive. So these are the three primary things that organizations need to become so that they prosper in the long run. Innovation and innovative disruptions are also being looked at by organizations very actively. Mm -hmm. And something that you mentioned during this COVID time, the Netflix subscription has gone up by 16 million users. So you can imagine as to how the things have changed during COVID time. One suggestion that I would like to make to the audience here, you can read a book which is uh, The Inevitable by Kevin Kelly. Mm -hmm. So there he talks about the 13 disruptive technologies that are changing the world in the next uh, few years. So those, those are the things that I wanted to say. And data is the new oil, as you pointed out absolutely correctly. So let's, let's move to uh, Dr. Ongshu. He's a data science practitioner, and he can speak some more detail about the domains of data science, data engineering, and how does one get into the domain? Over to you, Dr. Ongshu. Okay. Thank you very much. So maybe let me just share my screen. You guys are able to see the screen? Yeah. Yep. Yes, yes. So, <clears throat> hello everyone. I'm Dr. Anshuman Kosh, and I'm very happy and glad to be part of this presentation today. Uh, so, first of all, thanks to ABP and ABP Education, uh, Shivanita, Arpita, and others for you know inviting me 
a special thanks to Chan Pei Sir also. He has been my teacher, you know, 15 years back. So it it is a great pleasure and privilege for me to you know be part of the same discussion here. So with that, let me uh, start the discussion that you know I want to cover. So primarily, I have been working on data science field for quite some time. I'll give some background as well. And before that, I also work in some other fields. So I'll try to you know compare and contrast a little bit there. And other than the data science, I also have some practical experience on data engineering bit. So maybe during the end of the discussion, data science and data engineering career skill and all those related areas, I'll try to share you know my thoughts and experiences with all of you. So uh, maybe very brief introduction about me. I'll not get into detail, but I'm probably sharing some details because I want to link it back to some of the things that has helped me to transition to this career. So, you know, before I start about data science, I think CP has discussed a lot of important points. Uh, in my mind, basically, I think there are three core areas which, which are very important for data science or data engineering or any data related career. So, first and most important skill is not something new, which has been there for probably, you know, hundreds of years or more, hundreds of years, to be frank, or maybe thousands of years, which is mathematics, right? So mathematics actually forms the core of most of these disciplines. Even if you're talking about software engineering or data science, mathematics is at the core of it. And yes, when we're dealing with data science specifically, statistics also becomes very important. <coughs> so I'll say mathematics and statistics form a huge core pillar for data science or any data related career. Second part is very much linked to what I think CP discussed in detail that over the last you know 10 or 20 years we have massive data you know people call it big data i don't know whether we can define it define it with some specific value because you know what was big data 20 years back is probably very small data now you know and what will be big data tomorrow will be probably very different but yeah we can understand that there is sheer scale and volume and variety of data that we are getting <coughs> So because you have a lot of data, so for example, let me take a very simple example. If I tell you, yes, so you had 10 subjects in your 10th exam or 12th exam, and I tell you, you know, find out the total marks that you got in those 10 subjects. Probably you can, you know, with your hand, find out the sum of those 10 numbers, or you can use the simple calculator to do that, right? Now I give you same problem, computer sum, but I tell you, say for example, I'm working for Grab, we have 100 million customer, and for each of the customer, I tell you this much money they have spent. And I tell you that you compute the total money that all of them have spent on the platform. That is a 100 million user, right? The basic problem remains same, computing a total or sum, but you can't do it probably with your hand or with your calculator. And that is where, you know, computer science comes in place that gives you scalability. So I'm repeating the first two points again, that core of it is mathematics and statistics, and to make it scalable, you need computer science or programming skills. And the third thing which becomes very important because we ultimately work, want to work in some company or you know get a job. And to work in a company or a field, even if it is not a corporate, if you're working for a government, or even in education, right you need to understand that domain so in business we call it business knowledge in other domains you can call it domain knowledge but domain knowledge also becomes very important because you have a lot of data probably thousands of variables and as if we mentioned petabytes and jettabytes of data but which one to pull, pull, you know pick or what kind of relationship to check or what kind of prediction to make for that your business or domain knowledge becomes very important Okay, the uh, reason Dr. Dr. Ghosh, just a minute. Uh, I, are you changing your slides or you're still on the same no, slide? No, I have not changed. I'll okay. change. Okay. Fine, understood. I'm trying to relate it to my experience and coming to that, then probably it will make more sense to you. Yeah, so I've been repeating the three points. One is mathematics and statistics. Second is your computer science skill. And third is your domain knowledge. So for me, I think when I started my career, probably 10, 15 years back, there was no data science. And the reason I brought this particular slide is that, you know, there is a very famous quote by Steve Jobs that you can't connect the dots, you know, looking forward, but you can connect them looking backwards. 
so i did my computer engineering back in 2005 right and that time i did not know that data science will require computer science right and then i worked in it or software development for 3 years with wipro and i realized that there is a need of business or domain knowledge and i went for my mba and i also did my phd from xlri so that gave me you know theoretical understanding of the business but then i worked in different industries uh, from media and star retail for target and grab which is a technology ride any food delivery platform so the point being that i think it probably i got little lucky as well because you know i could connect those things bring my knowledge from phd for statistics uh, you know computer science knowledge and and now the business knowledge that i am gathering you know to combine all the three so the point being the main reason i'm saying that you need to develop all these three core skills that mathematics and statistics uh computer science and business knowledge those will form the foundation for your data career now coming to data scientist i think as i mentioned uh, 15 years or even 10 years back probably it was not so hyped and probably we did not have this kind of webinar discussing about big data or data science right so one of the key inflection point to my mind uh, was the this you know 2012 article from harvard business review which said that data scientist is going to be the sexiest job of 21st century right there has been lot of controversy about it and i you know don't want to say it is the sexiest or something but definitely it has become a very big career and very important area for most of the companies and now you know as a data scientist we should always look for data to support the hypothesis so let's assume that was the hypothesis by harvard business school that you know data science is going to be very big and important and if i take the data from glassdoor which is one of the largest you know career website last 4 years they have ranked data scientists as the number one job in america yes in india i understand that is probably coming up and it will become big but in and in america for last 5 years or 4 years it has been the number one job and average salary has been 120000 us dollar which is also one of the highest so definitely there is no doubt that you know this is probably one of the best career for all of you now this particular slide i generally you know discuss the background of it but i think you know cp discussed it so beautifully so i'll not get into each of the points i'll just you know probably summarize so that you can you know probably again you know remember and connect the dots that is one of the key reason it is growing is data right without data there can be no data science because it starts with data right and we have lot of data now earlier there was a problem that we did not have enough data to analyze now the challenge is that we have too much data to analyze but growth of data is definitely the first factor that is leading to this growth of this data field second and third points are linked which are linked to you know semiconductor and computer chip technology as all of you have seen you know 15 20 years back we used you know floppy disk which was 1.44 megabyte in size and in fact bill gates famously in 1980 says you know maximum storage that people will need will be probably few kilobytes right and now all of us have probably a terabyte you know hard disk or computer so storage has become very cheap and affordable over the period and we can store a lot of data now right and uh, even like in you know, early 2000 apple ipod could store few songs and became so big but now i think we have millions of song with all of us related to storage processing has also become faster both are linked to semiconductor technology so now probably my mobile phone has a 2 gigahertz you know processor which is much faster than some of the computers we had in our research lab in our university in the you know earlier days so storage and processing has become very faster efficient and cheap and last point is also very important that now we have lot of free tools like r python some of it i'll discuss probably later and once you have the free tool it becomes you know more democratic earlier probably only big companies which had access to mainframe or costly software could use this kind of technology now with the availability of free tools like you know hadoop python r anybody can use it you know you can probably go tomorrow download it and start using on your own now some of you might be also looking for some job in the future i think cp discuss some of the very beautiful points but just to probably you know make it little simpler for some of you based on my experience and all the research that i follow these are some of the industries where most of the jobs are coming up 
yeah in future it will change probably but currently technology is the field where most of the data related jobs are there as you can understand that as cp mentioned technology is all about data and digital so it's natural that you know they have too much of data and we have to make use of this data so for example i'm working for grab and data is a core pillar for us retail and e-commerce is another big field you all know about flipkart and amazon but other than that even you know the walmart of the world also use a lot of data in india probably we are not still using as much as we can but yeah in future it will probably become even better finance is another field which has been using data for a long time you know you when you go to a bank for loan or insurance or credit card they always collect a lot of info from you and use that to do the stuff so they have been using it for long uh, honestly i feel they could have done much more revolutionary changes in the field because of the data that they had but probably they have also limitation in terms of regulatory and law and other things but yeah that is another field which is very big and telecom and pharma pharma and healthcare i think is going to be very important but again pharma and healthcare will have some uh, limitation due to regulation and you know probably we are dealing with life and all and other than that yes there will be education there will be agriculture and i think in future most of the industries will get disrupted by digital and data and it will become more prominent this is probably based on the current industry scenario okay in terms of uh, once you are thinking about the role there are multiple roles not everybody needs to become a data scientist there are a lot of roles which are probably equally lucrative and equally you know impactful for the business so data scientist is the person who probably should have all the things that we have discussed so kind of when now this companies look for data scientists when you go through the job description it looks like a superman that they are looking for but yeah if you want to become a data scientist in a top company you need to probably have you know everything that we are discussing in this entire discussion however there are also roles like business analyst and data analyst so data analyst may not always build you know complex model but they can you know get the data do some analysis provide some you know insight to the business and that will be helpful for the business and business analyst and data analyst you know some people use it interchangeably uh, but honestly speaking there is little bit of difference where business analyst may not be expert of the tools and technologies but should have little bit more understanding of the business or domain whereas data analyst should have more understanding of the tools and technologies business intelligence is another term being used quite frequently and in my experience i have seen most of the business intelligence uh, analysts are actually working with some of the visualization tool and working closely with the business to create visualization and get insight from that and last one that i have mentioned here is another big area which is emerging so earlier people expected the data scientists to do everything including the engineering aspect but now people are seeing maybe somebody from a statistics background or mathematics background can create very good algorithms but may, they may not be so good building etl pipelines or maybe you know are uh, doing the sql or pipelining kind of work so data and ml engineer is another role that is coming up pretty fast uh okay so maybe this is the last bit i'll discuss i hope i'm not overrunning the time too much so basically i think some of it i've discussed i'm just consolidating uh, consolidating it again in the first slide i think i discussed very importantly that you need to learn mathematics and statistics that forms the core if you can't uh, do that doing it at scale in data science probably will be challenging but i also want to mention that don't think if you don't know it now you can't learn you know everything can be learned so if you think it is important this is the career career you want to pursue you can go and learn there are a yes, lot of good offline courses i think in india great lakes even praxis they offer i think some very good courses but i also think there are a lot of good you know online free courses are there also i think uh cp mentioned about khan academy they have very good courses on mathematics statistics probability you know linear algebra those areas please go and check those in computer science yes you can learn a lot of thing but if you want to finally get into data science i would say please learn sql and learn python and maybe r so python and r different companies and people have different preference but kindly in the industry i see python being used probably more so i don't have any personal preference but com- considering the job market sql and python might give you Uh, more benefits domain knowledge or business knowledge i discussed it i will not discuss it again and the last point is communication which is very important because you will be working with the software people you will be working with the business people you will be working with diverse set of people so you, you once you build a complex model or understand some statistics you have to go and explain it to the people right so that's where i think communication becomes uh, very important so that's it i think from the presentation side i think um, 
I'll uh, pass it on to Nirupam, and if there are any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer or discuss that. Thank yeah. you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ghosh. It is good to hear from you. Uh, there are a few questions which have already come up on the Q&A section. Uh, I have just, if I could summarize that, there are three, four questions which are coming out. Uh, is there a part-time course on cyber security that someone could do? CP, would you like to answer? Uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I guess there are a number of part-time courses in cyber security. I mean, you can do them both online and you can do them. I, I, of course, right now everything is online, but I mean, you can, you, I mean, in a regular world, you could either do a part-time course on, you know, online or in class weekend or whatever. So it, 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 it really depends on what you want to do with cyber security. If you want to, uh, you know, carve out a career in cyber security and I don't know what your background is. Uh, and, and you want to really make that as, as your career, then you may want to actually devote, uh, uh, you know, a full-time kind of thing, you know, effort into really learning that domain now, because now things are becoming very, I mean, the companies are demanding. We've seen, we've seen JDs change, you know, job descriptions. Previously, they were happy with people who knew a bit. Now, you know, the, the, the demand, the, the, the expectation from candidates is going up. So depending on who you are, what you do, if you think an online course can help you get into that uh, and build a career is fine. If you feel you need a full time, those are also there. Yeah, another question maybe uh, you will, as well can handle, uh, which is where is data science taught in this city, Kolkata? Oh, I mean, one of the places is Praxis Business School. We, we teach, but but then the challenge with that course is that it's a full time course. It's a full time nine month course, and uh, so if you are working, you may have to leave your job. And most of our students leave their jobs and come and study with us. If you are not working, it's easier. So yeah, we are we are well known uh, data science program in the country, and we uh, but obviously we are not well marketed because of this, now that this question has come up. So, right, and yeah, so we are here as well as in Bangalore, yeah, so yeah. So we, we are there, I think they, I don't, I, they, they, I think there are others also, some part-time courses are there in data science as well. I mean, yeah, there are okay. quite a few, yeah. Yeah, thanks. So next question, I'll just take one or two other questions. Uh, uh, this could go to Dr. Ghosh. What are the jobs in data science in government as such? Okay, so, Probably I'll not have the first hand information because I'm not working with governments, but what I know is there are a lot of roles because at the India level, I, I assume most of our viewers are from India. So maybe, you know, definitely in US and all, government works very closely. So the article that I showed you, Harvard Business Review article, that article is written by an Indian called DJ Patil. And he's a, he, he was a chief data scientist of, you know, US some government organization. And he is the one who wrote that article. So you can, in 2012, so you can understand in US and in many other uh, countries, definitely there is huge, you know, opportunity. And I can see in Singapore, the government uses data for everything. When I talked about even now COVID, right? So they, they like in India also we have apps, but here like they track in their website, which are the people who got say COVID on which day, which other people, you know, they had a contact to it. You can see all those data and, you know, even business intelligence dashboards, everything is available to public. You have apps to track, track everything and they, they have a lot of data scientists, right? In India also, I think it is becoming big because I know that Niti Aayog has, you know, big uh, mandate on data and data science. I think Amitabh Kant is one person who is leading that initiative and they have a lot of work on data. Uh, West Bengal, I honestly may not know much, so I will not comment, but I would like to believe probably, you know, they are also use, using and if not now, in future, as people become aware of the value of data and data science as CP and others are saying, uh, they will definitely use more and more. So it is just, it is not whether they will use or not, it is like when and how much, you know. So definitely, uh, I think we should look at the future and in future, even governments will use a lot of data and in China also when this COVID thing happened. I think they use a lot of data to track every person who was infected, where are they going, who are they meeting, all that. And in some, some countries, in fact, it's a threat <laughs> to the consumers or the citizens because too much of their data is available with government and government is, you know, observing everything, including your Facebook posts. 
so i think it can go to the extreme also but yeah i think surely government military and in all those fields there is huge huge scope of data science and any data related thing yeah okay thank you yeah I with the had one yeah, just please had one Take interesting it. thing that i saw i think sbi has come up with a job requirement okay uh, where, where they have actually named people you know they are looking for data scientists so sbi is like for you know for all practical purposes government so there's yeah. actually an ad which which i saw uh, if okay. i can find it i'll i'll, I'll can share it here so Interesting. that is i think government will... i think i can just add a very small point to that because uh, i think maybe yes sbi is doing a lot of stuff because only yesterday i found out one document published by sbi which has all the economy government and all other data for india you know very good quality data which is generally not so easily available so if anyone is interested in terms of gdp economy industry any data about india maybe you can search for sbi india data book i think you will get very good data about every aspect of india and indian indian industries yeah yeah uh, nirupam uh, just to yeah. add to that Sarat, uh, so uh it, it's really funny because you know when i was in india so if you go to a, a data science nerd meetup right where uh, we speak about the different models being used in different countries you will see data scientists from microsoft google so i would be there from ibm and so that's usually the community right but then if you look at europe or us which are a, a bit like so so matured markets right so over here when i go for a meetup so it's very casual to see a data scientist from united united nations data scientist from red cross from wwf and from the government so and also data scientists from microsoft and google so so yeah and so it's it's a bit mature uh, when you see europe data science but it's definitely coming in india so it won't be a surprise that five years down the line you go to a meetup for data scientist and you see people coming from like kind of is equivalent of data scientists it, it working for the government and 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 even if you look at like brexit referendum and also all behind all these political things like there is a data scientist yeah thank you sharat i agree because these are all future ready courses and these technologies though they have not been introduced to the fullest extent in india they will pick up in the next 5 years like sharat pointed out so it's it's better to be future ready rather than doing courses uh, which which are not currently in in the industrial perspective as such so uh, one last question wherein i i would like to answer this uh, i'm from the other background so can i take up cyber security as a career yes definitely i am not naming the organizations but you find big shots like chief information security officers who are from maybe bcom background or maybe geology background sitting in different organizations in big posts who did not start with a technical background but they have gone slowly into cyber security and the courses that we are talking about they all start right from the basics of computer science and go into the deep in depth knowledge of mathematics statistics and into the grc domain as well so it all depends on your passion it's a, it's a very important word if you have the passion to learn anything you can excel in any any uh, domain as such so uh, we will we'll end the questions answer session here and we'll we'll slowly move on with our discussions i don't have a presentation so let me just give you an a brief idea about cyber security cyber security in a layman's language is the protection of confidentiality integrity and availability of information assets now because these days information is mostly digital it is often confused with it security which is actually a subset of cyber security cyber security is a lot holistic it has gone the domain of cyber security has gone to the supplier side of organizations as well now cyber security in all covers some important domains it covers physical security with the impact of covid set in it covers business continuity planning and disaster recovery nobody was considering flu flu or an epidemic as a business disruption with covid coming in crisis management and this has led to a crisis organizations are working from home so that has led to the uh, i would say uh, coming in of disaster recovery and business continuity in in a much more holistic manner it deals with digital forensics which is analysis of the cyber threats once the cyber crime happens it deals with op operation security it deals with access control it deals with cryptography one of the very important aspects of cyber security it deals with telecommunications and network security as well a few uh, there has been a common i would say misconception in the industry that it is it is ethical hacking if i learn ethical hacking into computer systems i will be a cyber security expert but that is not the fact 
and as i said that cyber security covers if you if you go to the common body of knowledge as per the isaka uh, that is cissp domains it covers all these 10 domains and you need to have holistic knowledge of all these domains for cyber security now three important aspects of running a business are people process and technology and technology alone cannot secure a business so if i become an expert on technology and if i'm not knowing as to how to manage my people how to set up processes form policies in the organization i will not be able to run the organization properly because if you consider a situation wherein i am using an artificial intelligence tool but the person who is sitting with the artificial intelligence tool to do the threat analysis is a naturally stupid person so how will the tool help help that naturally stupid person to do the threat analysis so here the people aspect of cyber security comes in which is the most important what in uh, my feeling is because if you don't train the people properly if they do not have the proper skill sets they will never be able to analyze a situation they will never be able to implement the controls of cyber security so the most important part is development of skills of the student or an employee with adequate trainings in the 10 domains of cyber security and also on the best practices which which is related to the governance risk and compliance domain there are standards like iso 27001 which primarily deals with information security there are standards like iso 27032 which covers cyber security as a whole so it is very important that that a, that a student learns the 10 domains of cyber security in addition to that he has got a uh, knowledge of governance risk and compliance uh, what happens in the industries these days so there is a huge skill shortage if you ask me there is a huge skill shortage with respect to this domain as the threat landscape is going on increasing there are new threats being introduced into the industry each and every day as you understand the hackers are always putting into their mind as to how to hack into the system no matter what we do as to how to prevent a ransomware attack so this this gap is going on widening the more we put in our thoughts as to how to control the hackers are also putting in their thoughts as to how to find a vulnerability in a system hence i would like to stress the importance of a full time course here rather than doing something online because there are full time courses wherein you get to learn all these domains and you also have a hands on experience of the real world situation as to what to do when a cyber threat happens to an organization so this is more or less what i wanted to uh, touch upon uh, doing a full time course wherein you get practical experience is much more better rather than doing a part time course if you want to take up cyber security as a career so uh, i'll take up further questions later so let me ask sharath here uh, sharath if you could describe your journey into the new skills ecosystem what is it like to join the straight from the campus work with accomplished people in the top companies and see the domain evolve as such if you can share your experience yeah sure uh, if you don't mind i'll i'll probably share some slides sure sure please let me know when you can okay Sorry. Yep. Is it visible? Yep. Great. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So I'll I'll probably uh, take you guys through. Uh, couple of subjects so first hello <laughs> and uh, so I, i'll take you through on uh, who am i what do i do uh, what have been my journey so far uh, why you should be interested in data science with i think cp sir and both, uh, both cp sir and you guys covered and uh, and how do i uh, and how how do i get in right so uh, first who am i so i'm from south calcutta so uh, i'm a bengali right so uh, from 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 the local place uh love football uh, only if is being always involved uh other than that so i've resided in a couple of few places that's one of the advantages of data science right so uh, so i've worked in oil and gas in us uh, so then i was in speed working for snct 
uh, before this, I was in Ireland uh, working for uh, Accenture and Kellogg's, and right now I'm with uh, Switzerland uh, in a pharma company. So uh, and uh, then that I uh, so I'm I'm a so yeah so I'm a cliche data scientist who who will talk about Star Wars. <laughs> So that's about uh, that's about me. And uh, what do I do uh, to kind of uh, simplify it? So basically, a part of my uh, job is uh, to consult, uh, basically to figure out uh, how do uh, we convert the business cases uh, to uh, to analytics problems, basically, right? Because you are the business. Uh, let, let's say if if you have a director of supply chain who's working for twenty five years, how do I how do I help him out uh, with with data? And with analytics, so that's a part of my job. Uh, I also am privileged to lead a really good team of really smart people, of data scientists, data engineers, uh, architects, uh, analysts. And what we do together is we try to innovate uh, different kind of uh, solutions, uh, which are enabled uh, through through data science and data engineering and, and the things uh, you you heard about today. So uh, yes, and being a bong, so art and tea is one of the major part of that. So uh, my journey so far has been, uh, so I started my uh, career, uh, so I started my education with biotechnology uh, from Durgapur. So I'm from Calcutta, then I moved to Durgapur to do my biotechnology. And it's quite obvious in India that no matter what you do, you joined up with IBM mainframe. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's a, like it, it, so I was there and even my friends from civil engineering, I mean, did the same job, right? So that, that, that's kind of uh, what happens in campuses. Uh, I, 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 I guess still now. Uh, so then uh, after working on, on IBM, so I, I, I decided uh, to, to, to kind of reskill or upskill myself, right? So that's when uh, Praxis came into picture. So I joined Praxis to do my MBA and uh, data science fundamental because like this was way back uh, in 2010 so it, it was really new i mean people were then talking about big data and where we were still working on uh, dvds and stuff right so uh, that time uh, the, the the only course i think i think uh, in calcutta was probably uh, probably praxis who was teaching data science in 2011 or 12 so so yeah so uh, after that i joined uh, hp uh, so who who were the one of the uh, one of the leading ones uh, in in big data? So they had a big data center of excellence. So I was working with them as an analytics consultant uh, to kind of uh, help the companies, uh, let's say, in oil and gas, pharma, and FMCD out uh, on 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 analytics. Uh, after that, uh, again, I, I I saw the need to upskill myself because that time big data is all good and data science is all good, but this, then cognitive and AI was taking over. So that was a big thing. So even if you're in data science, you have to reskill and upskill yourself. So basically, it's a never-ending journey. So, so uh, then I upskilled myself uh, and uh, joined Watson Labs. So Watson Labs was uh, IBM Watson was leading in AI and cognitive sciences, so natural language processing, uh, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, and stuff like that. So uh, we were uh, we were building solutions uh, uh, on 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 those. Uh, so uh, after that, uh, once uh, so 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 I, I was still uh, pretty much a geek or a nerd by that stage, and uh, then like again, you need to reskill or upskill yourself. Where you need to understand that. I mean, you can talk about AI, right? But like the business, it it's hard for them to understand how AI is taking over. It's hard now. Like imagine a couple of years back. So uh, so there, where you need is a little bit of consulting and business as well, right? To to make the people understand on how AL is really cool, but how it can help you as a business, right? So that led me to Accenture. So I was uh, I was looking. Uh, so I, I was a strategy analytics consultant uh, for Accenture AI, and uh, this was this was for so most mostly European uh, customers. So I was based out in Dublin, uh, which was the European headquarters. And and yeah, so and and provide a couple of uh, solutions, and mostly in public sector. So and the questions you guys were asking, like how government job and also public sector, also like I was working with the water department and uh, with their data scientists. So it is coming to India, trust me. <laughs> so uh, so that was so that was my journey with Accenture, and uh, then I moved to uh, another company called Kellogg's. I uh, hope you guys would have heard about that. So basically, the uh, the complex. And uh, we were doing uh, analytics and AI uh, to help them make uh, not better conflicts but sell better. So that's so 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 yeah. So so 
you know, earlier it was only limited to technology companies that Anshuman was uh, mentioning, right? So like these were the places where you do some really cool stuff and all, but but right now, if you look at the employers who are employing for AI and, and data science, so those will be mostly business. Like I think 10 years before, I wouldn't have thought a company like Kellogg's will have a, like we'll talk about mathematics and data science, right? So, but, but it does. Uh, currently, I am with a, a pharma company called Abbott, uh, based in Switzerland. So uh, we do a lot of analytics uh, in, in pharmaceutical and uh, in both in development research as well as uh, in, in supply chain manufacturing, right? So, so that has been my uh, that has been my journey so far. So moving on, uh, like why data science? So I just like have a couple of uh, examples for you. So. Yeah, so right now, like all the decisions are majorly uh, influenced by data science algorithms that are built, right? Uh, for example, uh, Google will, Google data will help you help businesses to understand whom do I sell to, right? So uh, earlier, it was basically uh, kind of, you know, uh, sales officers and all figuring out the market and all, but now, now you have Google data who gives you the demography of the people that you are looking at. Right, and, and and the fun part is, so I think uh, the CP sir and uh, Nupam, you guys were discussing on on uh, on 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 the on basically uh, why uh, why do we need data science? Why do we need cybersecurity? So I look at it in this way. So like in pharma, our very closely guarded secrets are the uh, are the medical formulations, right? So, uh, and, and that's how pharma makes money, right? Now, Google's closely guarded secret are the algorithms, but they're available for free to you, right? So this kind of shows you how badly people need data scientists, right? That they're giving their algorithm, which runs their business and makes money for free, right? So, so yes, yeah, so, so, so that kind of summarizes on the, the world of data science and how badly we need data scientists, right? So yeah, so whom do I sell? Uh, to whom do I sell? You have Google data, what do I sell? So if you look at Tesco, or Walmart, so uh, they kind of uh, they kind of uh, what products to put in shelves are decided uh, based on data, uh, not based on any, any other means. So what do I sell is also an answer you, you get from data. Uh, when do I sell? So Amazon does a lot of creative analytics to kind of forecast on when a customer will be ordering a particular item and and shipping and trying to ship that before he even orders. Right. So that's also answered by data. So these are things that you see in daily life, which are driven by data science. Uh, how do I sell? So Facebook. So this, all of you guys would have heard about. So all the ads you see, see, and also these are also driven by data science because it's not to everybody that are shown. So it's uh, it's specific targeting powered by data science. Uh, then uh, what do I charge? So uh, you would have seen this horrible screen. So so uh, no, Uber does a lot of pricing analytics to kind of decide on uh, whom do I charge what and when. So if it's raining, it's not a surprise that you see 10x in your in your cap price. So, but again, so this is something that you use in your daily life, and and you use data science behind it. And 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 the funny part is like, uh, you know, I saw in the Q and A somebody was asking like difference between new and deep uh, deep learning, right? So trust me, I did all of these things in IBM Watson and all. But to the to the customer, I mean, when you are looking at Uber. You don't care whether this pricing came from a neural net model or a deep learning model or a weighted average, right? So, so it's like that. If if you're if you're if you're making a signature, so the company's interest in your signature it doesn't matter what pen you use, right? So, so it's it's so it's like that. And now, as CPSA mentioned, things are going way forward than this. And now the business cases are like, uh, how do I not have to drive? So it's like automated cars taking over, uh, like companies like Tesla and all, which are the pioneers. You know, and, and, pioneers in using data science and cognitive to kind of build self-drive cars. So now the business questions are more of like, I do not want to drive, right? So then Tesla is there to to help you because the autopilot and stuff happens. So so this was to kind of give you an overview, like why data science is because, I mean, you guys are living it in your daily, daily life, right? So yeah, so when, when I was back in HP, so my father once asked me, do you get printers in discount, right? Because like he wanted to like be, be kind of in touch with the product that I'm working for a company, but you can see that you are using data science in your daily life and, and there definitely uh, is a demand for data scientists. Uh, how do I get in? So as I mentioned, so ultimately everything boils down to the business impact, right? It doesn't matter what model you build, how you build, how much data you use it all boils down to how much business impact you make, right? Or what, what kind of uh, change you make for the business. So there are a couple of ways uh, to get in, like any successful project, we usually will have a, a data engineering team. 
So because as Sikisa was uh, mentioning on the mammoth size of data, and, 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 and that's not, and, and, and that's actually pretty serious because we do work with petabytes and geopetabytes of data, and especially in pharma, right? So uh, now basically you have all these data, right? And the data scientist knows how to build the model, right? But somebody has to look at petabytes of data and summarize it in a way that 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 can be used for data science, right? So that is basically uh, to to sum up the data engineering. So yes, so they, I, I think in India it is still more of like a data scientist is supposed it's supposed to is expected to know some of data engineering. But uh, trust me, that is going that is going away soon because uh, again, so in matured markets like Europe and US. A data scientist doesn't do a data scientist doesn't really do data engineering. You have a really strong data engineering team who takes care of the data, build pipelines, as Anshuman was mentioning, right? And because these are different skills, right? So a, if you're really good in math stat, it's 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 not like you're really good in uh, building data pipelines because that's a different skill altogether, right? So 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 in matured markets, these are these you will have separate KPIs, and as I was talking about the job descriptions, you will have totally different job description of a data engineer versus a data scientist. Uh, yes, definitely you need the data scientist who's basically uh, building the algorithms, building the machine learning stuff uh, that I spoke about or that everybody spoke about. So all these mathematics and stat statistics is basically done by the data scientist. There's another stream of career, which is the solution architect. But unfortunately, this is not where you can start, start from, right? So basically, you need to know all the tools and technologies which are available in the market and how to connect them together, which indirectly helps. The, so basically, these are the toys for the data scientists and the data change, the solution architect. But again, so it's not from the start of the career, but, but it's, it's a more experienced field. And finally, you have a consultant, data visualizer, business analyst, like different people call it different things. So basically, somebody who's a communication, uh, who's a communicator between the uh, between the tech team and the business team. Now, again, as I mentioned, so this is also uh, if you look at Europe and US, it's a separate stream, right? Because in matured markets in India, again, a data scientist is also expected to kind of uh, put the results forward to the business, but that always does not really go well. So, so, but, but again, so as as the India market becomes more mature, so these these will be uh, getting further away from each other and being their own own career path. So yeah, so that's it. Back to you, Nirupam. Yeah, thanks a lot, Sharat. Uh, that's from a Bugs Bunny cartoon, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Brothers. That's all, folks. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, a uh, few questions have come up again. Uh, kind of similar questions I went through all. Uh, I could uh, 83, 84 questions and we are being bombarded with questions. However, uh, if I could sum it up, someone has asked as to what background should I have to go into cybersecurity? As I again said, I would reiterate that you do not need to have a specific background to get into cybersecurity. Only what you require is passion, number one. In addition to that, if you have a little bit of skill sets on mathematics, statistics, and a little bit of knowledge on networking, that definitely works or helps in this career. Uh, CP, uh, would you like to add on anything here? Yeah, I think I would. Uh, you know, it, if, if you have some skills that are required in cybersecurity, which, which as you said rightly, networking is one. So it, it, is, an, it is a help, but even if you don't, because we, we launched our cybersecurity program last year, and we had a bunch of students, some of whom were actually looking for a switch and they just looked at the demand supply gap and they were interested in technology. I mean, I, let me tell you, because I interviewed a few of them. So although they had not worked in technology, but they were aware of what's happening and they were curious. So, you know, I, I think that was enough because as soon as we started delivering the, the whole you know, education piece and we started getting them into the lab and, you know, or, or, or doing stuff with then, then it, it, it's not something very complex to learn, right? So, and, and then you, I mean, if you don't have a background like that, then obviously you need to spend more time and, you know, so talking about, you know, when you were talking about a full-time and a part-time, the full-time also you have a student community. So there's a lot of peer-to-peer -peer learning. There's a lot of mentoring because you have an alumni and you also have profs. So especially if you don't have a background i think it makes sense to do a full time but you need to know why you want to get into cybersecurity and it should not be because there are 3 million jobs 
I mean, that's not the way to get into an, uh, you know, uh, a particular domain. You need to at least. So for me, one of the one of the interviewees, he said that, I think it was a she. She said that you know, securing data is just not just for me, but for my organization and in, also for my nation. It's a very critical thing that I am able to secure data. Nobody can hack into my data. Nobody can get into my power grid and shut it down and all of that. So I think that I'll be doing something very useful for the for for the country or for the nation or whatever. Right. So I think I mean if you have you know so there, there has to be somewhere some passion. I mean you know why you want to get into cybersecurity, but otherwise background is okay. Yeah. Uh, agreed. Yeah, uh, there was another question, which is kind of not relevant to uh, are free apps secure for the mobile? If you ask me straight away, no, you need to check the developer, the ratings of the apps. And as you know, government is banning a number of Chinese apps because uh, it, it came out that China was spying on India through these free apps. So there have been a number of apps which have been banned in India. So it's better not to install these free apps on your mobile. Uh, then a question which both Sharat or maybe uh, Dr. Ghosh can take up. Do I require prior knowledge of Python and machine learning uh, when it comes to knowing uh, or doing data science? Maybe I can take that up, but before yeah, that, sure. maybe I'll just add one small you know, comment to what you said. Yeah, you're logically 100% correct that free apps are not reliable and can steal your data, but you mentioned certain apps, but I think even our, you know, Google and Facebook are free apps and we don't know, you know, what do they do with your data, you know, or even if you're using Android or C, whatever, you know. So I don't know. So uh, yeah, I think that's a very concern area for everybody that I don't know we can have privacy and security if we want to also have free and convenient, yeah. right? Probably Till the time they, we are not aware, we feel secure, but so... I think yeah. like all the apps we are using are free apps and all of them might have some problem or not. Yeah. Maybe we are not aware or not concerned. But it is coming to the question, I think, let me repeat it. The person is asking that, is Python and machine learning a prerequisite to get into data science? Okay. So my point is that you need to learn those, but I think when you're saying prerequisite, you are assuming that you, whether you already know or not, right? But as I think all the panelists have mentioned that this field has been new and even now it is evolving and it will keep changing. I think that's a great point Sipi mentioned and I loved it that you, you need to have the passion. I think Nirupam also mentioned, you should have the passion. You should know why you are getting into and you need to keep learning things. If I look at the job market today, yes, Python and machine learning are in high demand. You should learn them. You can do an offline course, you can learn offline, online. Uh, most important is whatever you learn, you should practice, right? You cannot just say, I watched few videos or there was a very good professor who taught really well and I understood, no, it doesn't work like that. You learn it, you practice it. And uh, that is most important and you have to learn it. Now, yes, Python and machine learning will help you a lot to get a job. But I think, don't think that, yes, I learned Python and, you know, I'm secure for my life. No, it's not going to happen. I remember in my school, we learned things like uh, basic There's some problem with the connection, is it? Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. yeah, I think so. So, uh, uh, Nirupam, I can probably yeah, add sure, that. Yeah, you can add in. Uh, yeah, so uh, yes, uh, the, the very short answer with uh, will Python and machine learning help you to get into the uh, data science field? I mean, yes, of course, because I didn't have any of Python or <laughs> machine learning before getting into data science, so it'll, it'll help. But will it help you? Will just Python machine learning help you to get a job in data science? No. So that's the, so uh, because, I mean, look, so they are, are so as these and Shuman was mentioning, right? There are a lot of jobs of data science and all these things, right? But data science is a serious, serious key, right? It's not like some vocational skills you pick up and you get into, right? Because you are making actual, the business is making actual pricing decisions based on based on what data scientists or the models are saying, right? 
So while we have a lot of opportunities, uh, we need people who are really serious about, about data science and understanding. And that doesn't matter from a background, doesn't matter what background you come from. I came from biotechnology. So I didn't come from a mathematics background, right? So, and, and I have my fellow data scientists and who, who are also coming from BCom and even arts like psychology majors and also I, I have those also. So it, it doesn't matter which background you come, come from. But it's very important that you know, uh, the, you learn it in a good way. Now, my problem with part-time courses or online courses, while there are so many, so many things which are available, is that if, if a student is really rigorous and religious about that, so it works, right? But other than that, I mean, I mean, right now you can access a course which is taught in MIT online for free, right? But then why does the MIT guy get a job? which you don't right and that and that's because it's 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 basically the seriousness right how serious you are about the subject so these skills can be learned doesn't matter what background uh, you are from but you have to seriously learn, learn it so yes so if you get into a course and you learn python machine learning really well it will definitely help you to get a job yeah thank you sharat uh... Uh, Dr. Ghosh will take some time to join in. Uh, let's 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 open up the panel now. Let me ask uh, CPS to what made you start data science way back in. You started in 2011, and yeah. uh, how have you seen this area evolve? If you can share your thoughts. Yeah. So we started because uh, I think Praxis was set up by people who were all all had a technology background and were all comfortable with technology. So. I mean, in 2011, if we had an option of starting luxury management and, you know, business analytics, we would start business analytics because, uh, you know, we, we didn't know luxury management, right? Plus, we were in Calcutta and, you know, I think Calcutta, Calcutta has a very, very strong fundamental competence in math, stats, technology. I mean, you know, and even if you go to Bangalore or Hyderabad or Gurgaon, you basically have people, a lot of people from Kolkata who work there, right? So we started this because we we were we are all I mean for example you know uh, we were always we were data professionals quite a few of us and we saw this change coming we were very close to the industry the industry told us there is no pipeline for this so why don't you you know uh, Dr Ghosh is back uh, yeah uh, so you know why don't you get uh, you know why don't you start a program in this to get people uh, for us. So the, the, the demand had started at that time. And after that, it has exploded. I think it exploded around 2015-16, where we saw a steep change. And then we started Bangalore, right? And, 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 and the, what we used to teach in 2011 is completely different from what we teach in 2021. You know, it is unrecognizable. So when Sharat was saying, you know, where was Python? Why didn't Praxis teach me Python? You know, I think, you know, because at that time, you know, it was the SaaS <laughs> it, it, it was, you know, we, we, we actually had, we had partnered SAS in a way and we started with SAS then with, with great, you know, we were not very sure, but we moved to R because we thought that's the way things were moving. And then from R to Python, now at least we know the new, next new thing comes, we will not hesitate because we realized that things will keep changing. The client, the, the kind of students who join us has also changed. People are much more sure. They are much more aware of data science. We don't have to tell them what it is. Uh, they leave their jobs, they leave good careers to come. People come from institutes like IITs and IIMs to join this course because they feel this is what I want to do, you know. So, yeah, so it has evolved in many ways. I think what the company's demand has also evol evolved in a big way. And I think Sharad is absolutely right. Right now, data engineering is now becoming a complete new, uh, you know, thing in itself, by itself. So there are, again, our recruiters who are saying that, okay, we are recruiting data scientists from you, but we also need data engineers. Can you start a course in, course in that? And this is what we are doing now. So, yeah, I think this is getting sharper and more demanding. I mean, if I could call it that. Yeah, it comes back to the quote in your presentation, which you used, it is not the strongest of the species that survives. It is the one which is most adaptable to change. So that's how we always need to be. Uh, Dr. Ghosh, we dropped you, you were dropped off in between. So would you like to complete that machine learning and Python part? Then we can go on to the panel again. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really sorry. I think I had that's something. Okay. So uh, I think I think CP actually concluded that point, what I was going to say in that point. So what I was saying that in school, I learned, you know, basic code run, you know, Lego, some of those, you know, old day languages. Um, then in when I joined computer science course, we learned C, C++, 
and then i was personally interested when java was coming up so i remember i spent a lot of you know sleepless nights to learn java and once i joined wipro very similar you know i don't know fortunate or unfortunately i got to work on mainframe <laughs> so i worked on mainframe there and as cp mentioned once i went to do a, you know mba and phd we had to learn spss there Very the similar to sas it is to and even now you know if you go to academics even in us lot of top professor they still are comfortable with spss you know they use spss to build their regression model or some amos acm whatever so they, that's what they do even now and then i had to also learn r you know during that time and yes now i am using python and as cp said we don't know you know in future yeah so i am quite hopeful based on the data that you know python is probably going to stay because very big companies are using it there is huge community and companies are also demanding so python might stay for some time but again that's a probabilistic prediction we can't be certain about it and uh, the main thing i'm just repeating it though you know people have said it and i have also mentioned it that you should know why you are getting into the field you should be passionate and once you join the field be prepared to learn and upgrade yourself as required it may be you know now yearly it may be half yearly it may be monthly i don't know how the pace of change will be in future but be prepared that you have to learn and you have to upgrade i don't think that you know uh, today you know cp taught me python or this and i am short at for my life no probably that that's not going to happen in future it happened in the past i have seen people did an mba in marketing from some top i am or you know did some engineering course and 20 years work in that field and happily retired you know but in the field that we are talking about and in the world that we are in you have to learn you have to upgrade and that's the only way uh, for you to survive and thrive and i honestly also want to add one last point that uh, you can see it as a very you know as dipi mentioned the book a world and you know things are going here and they are very uncertain problematic stressful but i tend to see it as it is an opportunity right so what will happen uh, you know technologies of yesterday will get disrupted industries of yesterday will get disrupted technologies and even skills of yesterday are disrupted right and honestly most of the people believe me won't put the effort to learn and learn and relearn they will not put that effort because that's how you know human nature is we have inertia we have lethargy what not so most of the people may not do it and that's a huge opportunity and it will actually diverge in future because people who will continuously learn and evolve like they will get probably better and better and better roles maybe you know they can get a jump every one year or two year whereas people who don't learn they might stagnate for 10 years so i think uh, take it as a positive thing you know see there is an opportunity learn things and i can assure you that you will grow very fast thank you thanks yeah uh, some interesting acronyms are coming up a little bit on the softer side of it uh, going outside data science data engineering there's there's something which i heard which is known as bhag b h a g that stands for big hairy audacious goals so if you're setting your goals as such and they are big and hairy they look something scary I, i'm sure that you should succeed let's go to sharath uh, you started from durgapur and then went to ibm mainframe so what are the two three things uh, you did right so as to achieve success and uh, how have you achieved that success if you can just give me an idea yeah i think uh, one thing i did right is get into data analytics in the in the right time so uh, look so, so i was i was doing my biotechnology so there we were dealing with a lot of data from genetics and stuff right so and that point of time and then in mainframe so i first time saw kind of the data getting generated and used by the companies putting dashboards which were like i mean they had much more potential than that right and then uh, when i started uh, so th- then i thought i'll do an mba and then i came to praxis as cp sir mentioned so it's it's kind of like a mba college but it's more like like a bit of technology college so uh, we had a so so we had a, so i had my first data science fundamentals over there and and yeah so and during that time uh, 
during that time, data scientists, yes, so as Anshuman was mentioning, it, it was like the sexiest job. It was supposed, it was predicted to be the sexiest job and all, but it was not really sexy at that point of time because it was not defined what a data scientist or data engineer or what, so basically you are just doing it to end. You are trying to figure it out, right? So, uh, yeah, and as Citiza was mentioning, so even like, uh, so, it, so regardless of the language, so I started with SAS, R, Python. So, and, and really, we shouldn't be really concerned with the language, right? Because it is going to change. I mean, so Python is not going to stay. I mean, right now, I'm, so I'm learning Julia, right? So it's not going to stay any which ways, right? So you shouldn't think about like languages. It's like, you know English, you know Bengali, you can converse in Hindi, you can translate all these languages. And right now, the tools we have available, it kind of helps you to focus on the problem and the solution rather than actually really learning the language. Yeah, you're, yeah. Thanks, uh, Sharad. Uh, let me go to Anshuman. Uh, like CP uh, mentioned, the way he started data science back in way back in uh, 2011. And uh, the same question I would like to ask you as to how has data science evolved from a practitioner's perspective? You've already answered that question a little bit in your presentation, but if you would like, like to give some further detail. Yeah, I think data science is evolving for everyone like and it's very difficult to define it right and it's not a because it's not a constant anyways i personally think any term is human defined and we give meaning to the term and for many terms the meaning changes over time but particularly this field the meaning has changed very drastically i think maybe let me give you some example from my experience that will probably people will uh, understand better so when i joined start tv in 2015, right? It, it was not long back, just five years back, right? And I worked with some of the smartest people. Many of them have come uh, from companies like Unilever, PNG, you know, other other companies as well. So it was not that everybody was from media. They came from many different industries. Uh, but if I talk about data science or data field at that time in media industry in India, yes, we all know that people watch TV and, you know, we get some data as to who watch what, right? So we probably in Bengali has a uh, star Jalsha, GTV and all Hindi you have star plus colors, etc. And we get this data. Hey, okay. So 1%, 2% or 10% people watched my show or my sports match or something. But when you are, you know, trying to take a strategy, that's not enough. You need to know who is watching why, but you also need to know why they're watching it. Right. So I just have this data using, you know, the existing rating data that, hey, hey, my channel rating has dropped, right? Yes, as a data scientist, I can say, you know, I analyze all the data and it has dropped 50%. But as I think Sharad mentioned for business, that's not enough, right? They, they want to have an impact and before that, if there is a problem, they want to have a solution, right? And they are just saying that, yes, my rating has dropped or for some company, if they say, your sales has dropped, you know, every, every month it is dropping by 20%. That is data, but that's not useful for business. You need to know why. And for that, why we didn't have any data, to be very honest, right? And it was just five years back. And to get the data, I think even now in India, that's a very big industry, which is market research industry. Even globally, it is big. You have Nielsen, Kantar and all. So what they do, they go and collect all this consumer data from different consumers. And if you want, you can ask your research question also. They'll go and collect, hey, why somebody is watching Star Jalsa and not Star, you know, ZTV or why they're watching Colors and what show, why, you know, men watch movies and sports and news, women watch Sazbo serials, right? So all that, those kind of research has to be done to get the data. And the scale of it used to be maximum 1,000 to 10,000 because that itself is very costly. It will, you know, cost you crores of rupees. So that is just 2005 in media industry that to get data, we have to conduct a survey for three months to get data from thousand people, right? Then I moved to target where, yes, we have a lot of data that retail, uh, that you get, you know, consumer data, who is buying what and all that, right? But even then you don't know much about the consumer. You primarily know the transaction data. That is the purchase data, right? You don't know a lot of other things. Whereas if I give my example now, Grab, which is like very much like Uber and Ola, I know at what time the customer is at probably, you know, I, I can't share all the data, but yeah, we, we have, you know, 
lot of data about the location and about the customer, what app they are using. And for Grab, we have transport, we have food, we have payments. So beauty of it is like now I can see, you know, if, if you took this cab, then what kind of food you might offer, right? Or order. Or if you ordered this kind of food and took this kind of cab, what kind of payment solution might be ideal for you? So the kind of data that we have is like huge and so valuable. I don't have to probably go to the market and custom ask customers, right? I already have so much data challenge as I you know mentioned in the beginning of my presentation that there was a point uh, we had the problem of lack of data. Companies didn't have data to process and they had to spend money to get data by data. And now every company almost, you know, have so much of data, they don't know what to do with that. Lot of company, I tell you their biggest asset is probably their data. They have tons of data, but they are not probably doing enough to get value out of that data, right? So I think it has evolved, you know, very drastically and this will happen for more and more industries going forward. And I think this field will, I think, we don't know as Shara said what exact language we may be using, though I'm hopeful that you know Python will be used. We have put a lot of time and effort in learning that. <laughs> but you know, I think as an industry and as a field, it will be there and it will definitely remain a very promising career for at least you know next five, 10, 20 years or so. Yeah, okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Ghosh. Uh, let me ask uh, CP here. Uh, so uh, how did you end up starting cyber security and uh, data engineering? Yeah, you're asking me tough questions. Okay. So uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, uh, we, 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 we are kind of following data in, in, in launching new programs. So whatever, whatever we need to do with data, uh, am I audible or is there a problem? Yes, yes, you are. You are. Oh, okay. So whatever, whatever is, is whatever happens to data, uh, we, we want to be there. Right. So data science, we started with, we, start, we actually called it business analytics, then it became data science, which is, I think, a labeling thing, basically. And then, as I said earlier, that data engineering started evolving as a new field by itself. And we got our industry, you know, friends, recruiters saying that, you know, we need people, we need data engineers. We don't need only those people who can do modeling. We need people who can create that, you know, infrastructure to make this easy. And once the modeling is done, you know, we also need to deploy it, which is not what data scientists can do in, in, in uh, you know, in, in complex uh, infrastructure, cloud and all. I'll give you a very easy example of data science and data engineering. I mean, if you, let's say, do Google search, right? Every, all of us do Google search. You know, if you get good results, yeah, you thank the data scientist, right? And if you get the results in microseconds, you thank the data engineer. Because he, he, the data engineering team is helping you do the search and helping you get the results in that you know fraction of a second. It's not easy. So I think as human beings, we don't give enough respect to that. We give respect only to the fact that I got great results. But you didn't have to wait five days, right? You get got today. Our patience levels are very low, right? I mean, I mean, you, I, I think Dr. Ghosh is the only one who would probably remember. I'm, I go back much longer. That when you booted a computer, a lot of smoking happened and started in Calcutta because people used to start a, the, the machine, then go and have a smoke and then come back, right? Because then, because you waited so long, right? So now data, so data engineering was because of that, and cybersecurity because you know again uh, uh, securing the data became kind of something that. So I, I heard a very interesting thing that you know IoT is IoT if you can keep the data secure. Otherwise, it is going to become a, a nightmare. It's not, you know, it's not going to be something, you know, important for you because IoT means all your machine, you know, everything in the, all equipment is now going to get connected. So, I mean, you don't need to have a border wall. I mean, somebody can just come in, you know, if, if let's say your power grid is connected to the net, it, it, somebody can just hack into that and shut down the power for the, for, for, for that grid. So we think that all of these are connected. That is number one. The second thing we think are they are all, I think they all need immersive, uh, you know, education, immersive training for you to today. It's it's not an you know it's not an experimental field anymore. It's now it's like engineering. I'm sure right in the beginning we didn't have four-year engineering courses, right? But finally, when engineering became a formal field, people set set up colleges and they started teaching, right? So same with, I think, data science, data engineering, cybersecurity. I mean, you don't do a course in hacking and become a cybersecurity professional. 
you need to know the people process technology you need to be you need to know how to look at threats what's the difference between vulnerability and threat you need to do you know you need to have an experience of a cyber range and and all of that you know we want to put all of that together and for those nine months people kind of it's it's like a uh, an immersive deep dive into that subject so that when you go out things are going to change right but i think you will be far better prepared to respond to that change because your fundamentals will be very very clear plus you will build a network you will build a network of people who did the same course who got into the industry so like any other you know so that's why we thought that and i don't think we are going to add i mean i'm now kind of being partial with dr ghosh and when he says python is going to stay for a while i think with the data uh, business i think data science data engineering cyber security is basically unless something really amazing comes up we will add that as well yeah so <laughs> thanks thanks cb i was again looking at the questions uh, to the audience if i put up a generalized answer there are a lot of technical questions coming up like grid security scada security etc we are not going into the details of this as as you understand we are we are having a session which is kind of career oriented so what you can do is you can ask kbp for our email ids so we can answer these questions uh, if you mail them across to us we can definitely make an initiative to answer as many questions as possible uh so uh, let me go to uh, dr ghosh once again so how does a youngster uh, who's maybe say just out of college or maybe just out of school uh, how does a youngster get into this area does he choose a part time or a full time immersive course what are your ideas okay first i will honestly probably share my own philosophy and idea and then i'll probably get into a little bit more practical side of it. so at a very philosophical level as i said i i think what is most important is learning right not the source of it right and in today's world to be very honest there are so many great materials available if somebody wants to learn they can learn whatever they want to you know it was not so probably 15 20 years back right i remember when i had to prepare for cat i had to enroll for ims and to go to cp sir who is to teach but i i am sure even for cat nowadays probably there are some online courses or videos people can you know go and watch like recently i was doing something on zmat and i could find lot of good courses online right so i honestly feel there are a lot of free and online courses and learning and practicing and building the skill is most important skill and experience at the end of it however coming to more practical side of it that maybe not everybody is very self driven to set the goal you know follow through and do all the courses and it might be little lonely and difficult also right so if i am you know studying every weekend or every night on my own learning java python machine learning deep learning crn rnn like for some people who are very nerdy like me they might love it enjoy it but may not be for everyone right some of us also want a social you know bonding who some some people also want to look up to a professor whom they can go and talk to so i think the final call yes you can learn from any source i don't think that will matter but it depends also on your your type of learning what do you prefer if you prefer you know online please go go for it if you don't have the opportunity to you know shift a location and dedicate 9 10 months for the ones who are in a job for the freshers who can probably dedicate time i think full time might be better because uh, they 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 can dedicate their entire time on learning that and maybe what i have seen also in india and outside uh, your education brand all the network you know those things also matter right some of the institutes uh, have built some brand in the data science space like some other institutes have a brand in mba space right and uh, there are also networks right maybe you know people from that institution if they go and you know uh, set up that field or become the first adopter you know they probably willingly or unwillingly uh, there is this in group out group i don't recommend such things uh, but i think naturally with human beings that probably happens that a bengali i don't know the bengalis will support bengalis or not but in general you know there is some in group out group thing and there are institutions and networks so those also are very useful uh, i don't know how much for learning but definitely for your career and support peer group and all those things so i think uh, you should do your research properly set your goal first what you want to achieve right 
and then do the research. Yes, we, you can take some of our advices, but I would also say that please go check the rankings, do your own research, and also see what is more suitable for you, how much time you can dedicate. What is your mode of learning? Can you dedicate and learn things over weekend for entire one year without anybody watching, or do you need someone to help? Or you need to talk to your friends and peer group network. So I think based on all these factors, you can take the final call. But to conclude for freshers, I think maybe a shorter uh, full-time course might be good if they can afford uh, the time and the money part of it. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ghosh. Uh, there was a question again I saw on ethical hacking. How do I learn and how and where do I learn ethical hacking? As I said, you need to, uh, ethical, just learning ethical hacking won't make you a cybersecurity expert. You need to learn the 10 domains related to cybersecurity, number one. And we try to keep these discussions vendor neutral. So I'm not going to name a vendor here uh, from whom you can learn ethical hacking. But if you search the internet, uh, there are councils as such which offer good ethical hacking courses. Uh, so well, let me move to Sharath. Uh, you are young yourself. So what is your message to all the youngsters who are watching this program? Yeah, I, th I think uh, so one message uh, should be like, it's really cool. Uh, you, I, for me personally, uh, it has because again, as I say, so I'm from Calcutta, I did my biotech for Durgapur. So I couldn't have predicted like 10 years down the line, I'll be like working in Ireland, Switzerland, like covering Europe and stuff, right? So, and those kind of opportunity, it's kind of like data science is one of the, uh, one of the few fields that will kind of give you the opportunity, right? Because if you look at traditional fields, field for a civil engineer, if I was doing civil engineering, it, it wouldn't be probably, so it, 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 it would take me some effort, right? But, and over here in the data science field, especially in Europe, so it, the data science field is kindly, it, it, it's, it, it's mostly like Bengalis for some reason. I think that's what CP sir mentioned, like mathematics. So, but yeah, so it, it's like, uh, it, it's like, any company you look at the data science team is predominantly like people from India or mostly uh, from uh, from uh, from from Bengal. So uh, yeah, so my message would be it's really cool, but it's serious, right? So again, so uh, like as Anshuman mentioned, so I, I think uh, so my thing is like you need a full time rigorous course, right? Uh, so data science is not as I mentioned, it's not like you learn Python, you get into data science, so that's going to be tough, right? So it's a rigorous course. You need to learn in a structured way. But if you do it right, so I mean, the world is yours. Okay, right. Uh, there was a question on what is the difference between machine learning and deep learning? Anyone, uh, Dr. Ghosh, Sharath? I, I can take that up. Anybody? Yeah. All of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think uh, from a from a, I, I'll give you two answers from a data scientist perspective from from business perspective, right? From a business perspective, deep learning versus machine learning doesn't matter, right? Because if the business case can be solved by weighted average, the business will be happy to use that because that will cost less money, right? Uh, from a data scientist perspective, uh, the difference between, mainly the difference between machine learning and deep learning is, uh, it's, it's more of a control question, right? So like, for example, if a data scientist, right, somebody asks you, okay, so can you give me a forecast, right? So I can tell you it's, so let's say my product, 100 units were sold yesterday. Uh, how many units will be sold tomorrow? So deep learning can give you answer saying 150. Right. But the next question is why? So you don't have any answer. Right. So that's the, for me, that's a fundamental difference. Right. So machine learning is more controlled, understandable, explainable. Uh, deep learning, is, on the other hand, is if you just want results and do not want to uh, look at the parameters, uh, why? So then, and, and sometimes it's challenging, like to give you an actual example. So, like I was with Kellogg's and traditionally, uh, conflicts is sold with milk if you go to any, any store. Right. But if you're shopping in pandemic or in this kind of situation, so it's more online shopping, right? So if you're online shopping uh, in Tesco online or even Amazon groceries, right? So you buy a beer and then it will show you, you might want to buy Conflex, right? So, 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 that's what, so that is kind of deep learning kind of stuff, right? So it will look at your patterns and decide on what to do next, right? But if you look at machine learning, so, I'll, so even if you would achieve more sales, but you still want to have more control, if you know what I mean. So, so yeah, so for me, that's the, that's kind of the difference. Okay. Uh, there was one Maybe question. I like to, yeah, sure. I like to to that. So, uh, so I think these fields and names are used sometimes interchangeably and different people have different meaning to it. 
but probably i'll get into little bit more technical and theoretical here because i feel you know some of these fields have you know some theoretical thing where yes people use interchangeably but there is are some underlying technical and philosophical difference so i think the broader field that people talk about is ai artificial intelligence mm -hmm. which came much earlier where we are saying a computer does something intelligent human like like humans have intelligence so computer does something intelligent so if a computer can add 1 plus 1 that is also basic form of intelligence so anything human like intelligence that computer shows is ai artificial intelligence which is a much you know bigger term probably some bit of cyber security and other things also might come under that within that we 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 have you know the domain of machine learning it is basically a subset of ai it is not you know overarching it is a subset of ai where the fundamental pattern has changed very differently from software engineering where earlier we used to code program and say computer you do this steps 1 2 3 4 5 6 the computer used to follow those that is the traditional computer algorithm or some of the statistical learning right in machine learning the fundamental shift has been that we give some broad framework to the computer and we give a lot of data right and the computer learns from this data as to what is the pattern some bit of what sarath said is like yes some of the algorithms in basic machine learning like logistic or linear regression you can understand what is happening cause and effect and why it is happening why part of it it's there in basic some of the machine learning but even within machine learning if you go to complex model like support vector with kernel or maybe you know gbm or random forest after that it becomes very complex to probably define or explain right so machine learning can also get slowly slowly complex deep learning is primarily the area where it is again a subset of machine learning right it is a subset of machine learning where so in machine learning we use lot of different model regression tree based models svm etc and in deep learning specifically we use neural networks which some people think some are related to human brain and neural structure though it is not exactly same but primarily we use some form of neural network there are different neural networks and these models at a base level which is which is something we call perceptron can be very simple like one layer or two layer neural network can be simpler but it can be thousands of layers so pretty complex so sarath is right that once it becomes very complex it becomes very difficult to explain right but ultimately there is a overall group of ai within that there is subset of ml within ml there is a subset where we use neural network is uh your dl or deep learning and data scientist will be a circle which has overlap with all three of these but can have some area which is outside so data scientists might use as you know some of you said that any of these tools or maybe some new tools and technologies to ultimately solve the business problem using data and have some positive uh, business impact yeah thanks uh, dr ghosh uh, we have around seven minutes left because I wish to come to a dead stop at one o'clock Indian mm -hmm. standard time. We won't take it to Indian stretchable time. Mm -hmm. So we'll stop exactly at one o'clock. So uh, let me ask uh, Dr. Ghosh once again. Uh, in terms of recruitments, uh, what do recruiters normally look at? Uh, means when it comes to recruiting a data scientist as such. Okay, so like. I, I generally prefer to be very honest because there is no purpose, you know, trying to say things that later people will find out are not true. To be very honest, as I mentioned once earlier, that now if you read most of the JD for data scientists, India or even in many other, you know, other countries, uh, people are asking simply for a superman or superwoman, right? Uh, who should be able to do everything, right? You should know your math and stat, you should know all the programming language from SAS to R to Python, Julia, whatnot. You should know cloud like Azure, AWS, Google, and etc. You should also implement the things that CPU was saying that, you know, people want you to also know Kubernetes and, you know, uh, DevOps and, you know, uh, Docker architecture and everything. So, yeah, I think now the thing that has happened, there are a lot of misconceptions. People are still learning the fields. Uh, they're trying to understand. So, I think it's not probably, it will be unfair to say it is happening only from the company side, but I think it is true from both the sides that everybody is learning from these webinars or from blogs and learning all the keywords. 
and in the JD also people are putting all the keywords, in the CV also people are putting all the keywords. So like I have been on both the sites and I've seen like people also, you know, clutter their CV with all the <laughs> latest tools and technology and companies also clutter their JD with also. It's a kind of, you know, to be very honest, currently I feel some bit of madness going on, but I hope uh, we learning the things and having a better understanding. So if we follow the Silicon Valley market, right? Like even within America, there will be difference. Within Europe, there will be difference, right? But Silicon Valley is probably one of the places where some of these technologies are a bit more mature and advanced. And I see they have got a little bit more clarity. So now what we discussed about data scientists, that particular role, many of the top companies don't call data scientists anymore. They call that role research scientist, right? who do those algorithm part, mathematics part, and you know, doing something new, like Google search engine algorithm, something like that, right? Or recommendation of Netflix. And they also have people like data scientists who help more the business or the product guys, uh, you know, getting some data, some visualization, running experiments, A-B test. That's the role they are calling normally data scientists. They also have a lot of data engineer, which CP mentioned, right? So. And that I think is many a times probably 70 or 80 percent of the job that getting the job, cleaning the data, putting up the pipeline and finally implementing it. And also after implementation maintenance. So I think this role will become more defined in the future. But what I will say that people who are learning, they more they learn the better. But at the same time, don't go too broad that you don't understand anything. Right. So maybe you choose, you know, maybe uh, something I read recently is something like a T-shaped skill, where there are few areas which are your core or key competency, you become a worldwide expert in that. It can be, you know, Python, it can be DevOps, it can be something. So choose, you know, two, three skills where you are very, you know, concrete expert, you know, in your country or in your area. And have a lot of other skills which you may not be an expert, but you should know basics. So if somebody talks about it, either you can assign to somebody else or you can say, you know, this is applicable here, not applicable here, or you may, may not use it. So have the basic knowledge uh, that will help you interact with other people and all. But yeah, so I think currently uh, there's a lot of madness going on, but in future, I think, uh, you know, it will become more clear. And in terms of uh, probably the value of the role and probably some people might be interested in monetary benefit also, so for that angle, not all these roles will be equally uh, important. Data engineering is very important, but I think in terms of career prospect or salary, my prediction, again, and maybe I have some model in my brain, but my prediction will be data scientists will remain a probably more lucrative field, at least for you know quite some time, then probably your data engineering, uh, data analyst and business analyst kind of roles. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Dr. Ghosh. Yeah. Uh, I saw yeah, I saw a lot of things about, tell us about careers and all. So I think yes. if I have two, three minutes, let me just, you know, yes, add a story. Sure. I, just, I was coming to you, in fact, yeah. I thought yeah. so, yeah. So let me just do that so that at least they get a one concrete picture. Sure. Yeah, let me see if I still have that slide with me. I don't know what happened. Oh, there we are. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm just going to kind of go up and just give you a quick look and i'll do it in 3 minutes so a data engineer basically creates organization organization wide access to clean reliable data at scale okay and so this was the fastest growing job in 2019 in the us growing by 50% okay and 40% 41% of all data engineering work is done out of india so i agree with dr ghosh that you know it may not have the glamorous salaries that a data scientist has but the gap is reducing. Okay. And people realize the importance of data engineers and roles are data warehouse engineer, data platform engineer, infrastructure, analytics engineer, data architect, DevOps engineer. I think once you get into the field, you'll realize these skills. SQL is a really important skill for that. Python ETL, which is a traditional data warehousing skill, you know, operations, they also need to learn. So our data engineering program also teaches them machine learning and a little bit of deep learning because they need to know that. Right. And then the new architecture, Hadoop, Spark, MongoDB, DB, no SQL, DevOps, IOT, cloud. Finally, you have to, you know, deploy it in cloud eventually. Yeah. And data engineers are unsung heroes of the data world. Their job is incredibly complex 
involving new skills and new tech it's really hard to find good data engineers so my prediction is because it is hard to find them people will have to pay more for them so that's my my conclusion and then we come to data science which is i think out of the three the most well known now they use processes algorithms stats maths as dr ghosh was saying to get knowledge and insights from data in various forms this role was the second highest growing role 32% which is a huge growth in a time when there are no jobs and 70% of data science work is actually done out of india because a lot of large companies have their you know data science factories in india so to speak right and roles are data analyst business analyst ml expert data scientist now of course ml engineers you know so research scientists so many roles are coming up in this area skills computer science very much stats math ml dl ai and domain you have to know the domain really well both as a data engineer as well as a data scientist as well as a cyber security uh, expert to 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 solve problems and data scientist is a person who's better at statistics than a software engineer and better at software engineer than a statistician right so kind of a all round a rock star star wars kind of guy uh, yet now it's getting more you know narrowly defined and finally cyber security they monitor detect investigate analyze and respond to security events to protect systems and data from cyber risks threats and vulnerabilities they are our security guards so and ibm says in a business standard report that india needs 3 million cyber security professionals right now and cyber security venture says 3.5 million unfulfilled cyber security jobs by 2021 roles and i think nirupam can you know add to that information security analyst security consultant network security engineer cyber security analyst security operations soc analyst and so many more you know like you can't really fill skills are more networking vulnerability assessment penetrating test penetration testing db administration system administration and so on and so forth and the internet of things devoid of comprehensive security management is tantamount to the internet of threats right so we don't want the internet of threats we want the internet of skills right so cyber security or things so cyber security becomes really really important so going back to my last slide please reskill yourself yeah so that's what i had to say thank you very much cp uh, one final question we have already discussed a lot uh, mm -hmm. one final question i'll put up to sharad before we have a stack overflow because uh, i guess we have discussed too much sharad how has you uh, have you think the world has changed since 2012 when you graduated out of praxis i think uh, data science have gotten more mainstream and people have realized uh, to be honest uh, the 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 power of data science and how indians can contribute and as sir mentioned so like my ex experience uh, mostly have been us and europe and the but all the factories uh, are with the really people who are doing data engineering so those are all stuff that is happening in india so what is happening in europe is basically fine tuning the models right but still the data science and data engineering star is was happening and still happening in india and will be happening and i think that's why it's more more important because very soon the customers will be demanding like different uh, streams of data engineering data science and cyber security and and all these streams right so so yeah and other than that data science is also becoming more global so because data has no country right so it doesn't matter whether you have run a model in india so it is it's, it's not like you have sold products in india fmcg and similar experience you can uh, put in switzerland right so th that stuff right because the banking professional in india is different from banking professional in switzerland but the data professional in india vietnam us <laughs> europe wherever has similar it's similar to any other country so it, it doesn't have any country so so that's a good part so you are you're truly in a global career rather than a very country specific career thank you very much sharat uh, thank you to all the attendees will with that we come to the end of this webinar thank you to all the panelists charanpreet singh uh, dr ongshuan ghosh uh, sharat as well for the wonderful and informative session i would request all of you to please stay safe wash your hands and practice physical distancing i i do not use the word social distancing we are all pretty much socially connected so i there was a message from someone nbp to wait for 15 minutes do we have to wait or cuz i am feeling hungry and i think we have exchanged a lot of interesting information is someone coming in from nbp oh, no you can please okay start. yeah you. 
thank you very much so stay safe and take care thanks a lot bye thanks thanks bye. dr ghosh thanks sharath and thanks nirupam yeah. thanks bye thank you guys bye bye, bye.